They were designed to be the best. They met enemies face to face, endured tragedies and enjoyed victories. They went down in history due to the bravery of their crews. They are the ships that deserve to be called Naval Legends. In this episode, USS Yorktown, Pride of the US Navy. On December the 7th, 1941, Japan attacked US naval vessels moored at Pearl Harbor without declaration of war. The majority of the US fleet stationed there was sunk or disabled. The main strike was delivered by Japanese planes brought to Hawaii by aircraft carriers. The attack signaled the United States entry into World War II. The assault on Pearl Harbor showed that powerful armored battleships ceased to be the main naval force. The US Navy needed a fleet of aircraft carriers to successfully operate in the Pacific Ocean. The lead ship of a new class, USS Essex, was laid down in April 1941. USS Yorktown, CV-5, that bravely fought the Japanese and was sunk during the Battle of Midway, served as prototype of the new class. The second ship, initially named Bonhomme Richard, was then renamed USS Yorktown to honor her predecessor. When designing the Essex class, American engineers took shortcomings from earlier carriers into consideration. The New Yorktown was bigger, had increased anti-aircraft armament, a powerful air group, and a host of other new features. USS Yorktown was commissioned in 1943 at Newport News, Virginia. Uh, where she left for her sea trials in the Atlantic and then she was sent to the Pacific Theater of Operations from 1943 through the end of the war in 1945. Length 872 feet, beam 147 feet 6 inches, height almost 82 feet, total displacement 36,200 tons, draft about 27 feet 5 inches, anti-aircraft artillery 12 times 5 inch Mark 12 guns, 17 times quadruple Bofors Mark II 56 guns, 51 times Olicon Mark IV 78 cannons, armor, belt 2.5 to 4 inch, pilot house roof 1.5 inch, air group up to 100 aircraft. F-6F Hellcat destroyers, SB-2C Helldiver bombers, TBF Avenger torpedo bombers, propulsion, eight times boilers from Babcock and Wilcox, four times Westinghouse geared steam turbines, power, 150,000 horsepower, maximum speed, 32.7 knots, range, 15,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. Yorktown is one of the heavy strike aircraft carriers of Essex class, constructed by the U.S. during World War II. The U.S. Navy commissioned 17 ships of this class between 1942 and 1945. In total, 24 Essex class aircraft carriers were built. It was the first time in history vessels of that size were mass produced. USS Essex, first of the new class, received the hull number CB9. USS Yorktown, built later, was assigned CB10. USS Yorktown was commissioned on the 15th of April, 1943. Captain Joseph Clark commanded the ship during her sea trials and first training air group flights.
Yorktown lacked thick armor and powerful main guns, but an aircraft carrier does not need either. She stays away from the line of fire and uses her air group to attack the enemy. Yorktown launched her aircraft from two catapults on the flight deck. One was located port and the other starboard. The catapults were operated from below decks. These big tanks here took, stored all the hydraulic fluid that was needed to propel the piston. This thing would be pulled tight and then the hydraulic fluid would be pumped into the cylinder and which would push the bar all the way forward and these cables would run backwards and then it would propel the aircraft off the flight deck. Very intricate, very complicated because you had cables that were running through the ship to get to the flight deck. Compared to her predecessor, Yorktown was faster and could go 3,000 miles farther. Another important advantage of Yorktown was the independent work of her four engine boiler rooms. She was the first aircraft carrier to have this feature. Each machine had boiler and turbine rooms. In the event of loss of three machines, the ship could still function properly with one remaining engine boiler room. This is the boiler right here. They used something called bunker oil. It was very, very thick like uh, pudding. They'd have to heat it before it went in to the boiler. They could burn it then. And then that would heat up the steam, the water into steam, which will go into the next room for, uh, to, to run the turbines. Crew quarters on Yorktown were situated very close to workshops, which could cause serious problems in the event the ship was hit. Special attention was paid to the safety of the ship and her crew. All of Yorktown's ordnance were stored on the lower decks of the carrier. In case of a fire, these compartments could be easily flooded to prevent explosions. A bomb would be brought up from the bunker down below and it would be brought into here and the bomb would be assembled on a, on a carrier and they would put the, the fins on the back of the bomb, they would put that against the bomb itself, but they wouldn't put the fuse in. The fuse would be waiting for them already up on the flight deck because if you put a fuse in a bomb, there's the possibility that the bomb would explode and damage the carrier. All of the carrier's decks had their own damage control compartments, which gave access to venting and firefighting systems. Another important issue was the safety of the ship and her crew in case the ship was struck by enemy bomb or torpedo. Right here in 1944, a bomb actually went through here and then went down the side of the ship and exploded on the hull. A system of special escape shafts were designed to save the lives of the crew. If the ship was hit below the waterline, sailors could abandon the damaged or flooding compartment and climb up to the next level. Once all the crew members were safe, the hatches to the compartment were sealed shut. The pilot house had direct control of the ship. The control station gathered all the information about ship status, such as heading and speed. Yorktown also had several backup control rooms. It tells everything. It reads the same way as it does up in the bridge. The revolutions, the direction, the shaft speed, it's all here. And the shaft can be controlled from here.
In the fall of 1943, the aircraft carrier took part in her first major operation near the Gilbert Islands, the Battle of Tarawa. Later, in the beginning of 1944, the ship supported the invasion of the Marshall Islands and attacked Japanese Air Force bases on Guam. USS Yorktown and other Essex-class aircraft carriers became the U.S. Navy's main weapon in the Pacific theater of operations during World War II. They participated in nearly every operation in the Pacific. These ships were considered so dangerous by the Japanese that they were frequently selected as targets by kamikaze pilots. Yorktown was lucky enough to avoid them. But USS Banker Hill, for example, sustained heavy damage after a kamikaze attack. Despite the extensive damage, Bunker Hill survived. The Essex-class vessels were incredibly durable ships. In fact, none of these ships were ever sunk by the Japanese. On April 1, 1945, the assault on the Okinawa island began. Over the course of next six weeks, Yorktown's aircraft provided continuous air support to troops landing on the island. Every three days, the ship would leave the battlefield to refuel and resupply. This routine was broken only once, when Yorktown received the order to repel the attack with the famous Japanese battleship Yamato, the flagship of the combined Imperial Japanese Navy. By 1945, the Japanese Navy was on the brink of destruction. The High Command was forced to resort to extreme measures. Yamato was tasked with repelling the attacks of the U.S. aviation and defend the Ryukyu Island against invasion. It was effectively a suicide mission, as the ships did not have enough fuel to come back from Okinawa. On April the 7th, Yorktown, together with the other carriers of Task Force 58, advanced to intercept the Japanese ships led by the steel monster, Yamato. After two waves of attacks of the US aircraft, Yamato seemed invincible. Yorktown participated in the final two attacks on the Japanese battleship. On her first wave, Yorktown's aircraft managed to destroy most of the Yamato's gun batteries and damaged the engine room, and the battleship lost maneuvering control. After more than 20 direct torpedo and bomb hits, Yamato began to list. As her list increased, she capsized, and her ammunition stores detonated. A monstrous blast tore the ship apart. A smoke pillar rose up to four miles. Even crew members on Yorktown some tens of miles away from the battle could see the effects of the explosion. The destruction of Yamato established the defeat of the Japanese Navy. Japan did not have large battleships anymore. The land of the rising sun was powerless to stop the US Navy in the Pacific. After sinking Yamato, Yorktown's air group participated in bombing of the Kure naval base and military targets near Tokyo. Yorktown received 11 battle stars for her service in the Pacific. She was decommissioned in the beginning of the 1947 and mothballed for five years. The ship then underwent several modernizations and was recommissioned in 1953. The newly modernized Yorktown assumed different roles, ranging from a movie set to a flagship during a large-scale U.S. Navy deployment in the Pacific. In 1965, she participated in combat operations again, this time in South China Sea, during the Vietnam War. Towards the end of her military service, Yorktown served as the recovery ship for Apollo 8 space mission. 
In 1970, Yorktown was decommissioned, and in 1975, she was formally opened as a museum in Charleston, South Carolina, where she remains to this day. The purpose of the Yorktown being here is to perpetuate the memories and sacrifices of those who served on these vessels and to make it more interactive than it has been in the past. And the young people will, will see more of the history and they will enjoy it more.